my friends, my Facebook friends, and those that are watching the replay. Great to see you. It is a cold and drizzly day here in San Diego, and I'm being a little bit lazy. I have not done my hair or makeup, but it is what it is. I'm still coming on because I have some great stuff I want to teach you today. As you can see, I actually have um, a little, di a little, what is it, board up today. So I want to dive in a little bit about this one thing that gives you the power to stop binge eating. Now, this week I've been coming on and talking about why you binge eat. And it's so important to understand. By the way, I just noticed that the, the arrow is kind of like going through my head. That looks funny. So anyways, um, I've been coming on and talking about every day what is causing you to binge eat. Because it's so important to understand the why. Why you're binge eating. And then once you understand why, that is when you can change it. And that is when you can stop it. So just to kind of recap what I've been going over, because it all builds on itself, this, this week's tr trainings that I'm doing. They all tie in together. It's important to understand each of these pieces. So the first day, we talked a little bit about how it's our brain, our brain, our brain science. We're actually designed to binge eat. Okay, so the way that our brains are wired because of our dopamine, because of our conditioning, all of those factors, because we we are going after the things that feel good instead of avoiding the pain. That's why we binge. We also binge because of the urges. If you didn't have an urge to binge, binge you wouldn't want to eat the food. Now, today, the number three reason why you binge is because of your thinking. Now, I teach one of the coaching tools that I teach is called the model. If you've been following me for a while, you know this, but for those that are new, I want to go over this. So basically, right here, these are this is a model, a thoughts in a model. So the C stands for circumstance, the T stands for thought. The F stands for feeling, the A stands for action, and the R stands for results. So basically, everything in life fits into this model. All of our results, we can put our thoughts in there, we can put our feelings, and we can see what we are creating in life. Because it's so important to understand where we're currently at, our unintentional models and how we are, what we are creating. So if you have a result in your life, that you do not want, it's because you are you have a certain belief system. You're feeling a certain way about it. You're taking certain actions. In order to create that change, you have to break that. And so um, the model is the way to show you how you're currently thinking, and then it's the tool to get you to where you want to go. So it's so important to understand how this works. So I'm going to give some examples here, and I'm going to tie back into this into the training, but I'm just teaching the model really fast. So you have a thought. The thought is, I have no control. When you, ha when you think that thought, it makes you feel powerless. And what do you do when you feel powerless and you see a cookie? You eat the cookie. And then as a result of you eating the cookie, you're staying stuck, you're not changing, um, and you stay the same, okay? So it's important to understand how our thoughts create all of our results. We can always tie back our thoughts to our results. Now, let me talk about how to use our thoughts to create change and how this tool actually gives you power. Now, one of the things I want to address before I go into that is I remember when I was really feeling very hopeless and in my binge eating where I just felt really stuck and I felt like there was no control over me and I thought that there was something wrong with me and I thought that I would just have an urge, a feeling that I had to binge and that I always had to give into that, that it was out of my control, that it was the feeling causing it. But if you, when you look at the model, it's always our thinking that's creating the feeling first. Our thinking creates a, re, a, a urge. Our thinking creates the desire and it may feel like you do not have a thought and I'm going to explain why that is because understanding this piece is going to be the tool that's going to give you the power. So as we talked about in day one and a little bit in day two is that 
because of the way that our brains are wired and the way that we get the dopamine hit from the food and that our brain thinks binge eating is meant for our survival, that it is now in our subconscious. So we aren't even aware that we're having a thought. And on top of that, most people, probably until I just brought it up to your realization right now, you're probably like me where you thought like, oh yeah, I just get urges, it is what it is, it's not my thinking causing it. So you're not even aware that it's actually your thinking that's causing the urge. And so what you have to do is right now, where you're currently at, your current model, your current thinking about certain foods when you're triggered is that it's automatic because it's in your subconscious mind. And that's where a lot of this is happening because it's all subconscious, you don't realize it. And so the pow how you get your power is instead of relying on your primitive mind and just giving into your urges, into your habits, that you then delegate your thinking to your prefrontal cortex. Now our prefrontal cortex is more of our human brain. It's where we're able to make decisions. It's where we're able to have a choice. It's where our motor skills are. It's where we're able to have thoughts about our thinking. It is our power. And so the key and this whole day three is about is about understanding how to shift from your, using your primitive brain, which is subconscious, and that you're in that automatic and not even aware of your thinking to bringing your thinking to your conscious mind and having a choice. Because you have to be able to outsmart with your prefrontal cortex, your primitive mind, to be able to get out of this binge cycle because you need to be able to take responsibility and notice your thoughts. So the very first step in this is just awareness. Learning why this is happening, which I just explained, and understanding that it's our thoughts driving it. So the very first step is just realizing, and first off, most, like I said, it's just so subconscious, you don't even realize you're having it. So now that you realize it, now that you know this, you can start looking for your thoughts. And what you need to do is you need to be able to choose new thoughts. You always have, a, you always have an option to think something different. Even though it might not think, feel like you do, but because you're just wired that way, but you always have a choice. So what I always like to say is this is about making it a practice. I talk about teaching skill sets. This isn't about just learning, like hearing it, watching this video, and then being like, oh, I'm healed. This is about practicing the skill of being aware of your thoughts and being able to change your thoughts. And so when you're aware of it, then that's when you can get authority over it. Now let's talk about the learning process. Now what's going to happen is, you, you now know this. So in the beginning, the awareness is going to be very hard to get. So what happens is that after the binge is where you get the awareness. So you just start with after you binge, then you bring yourself to the awareness and be like, oh wait, I just binged. I wonder how that happens. And then you go back and figure out, well, what was the thought? And an example of this is, when you're in that urge, I often would be, oh, I really want that. And then I would tell myself, well, I have no control over that. And that thought, oh, well, I have no control made me feel powerless. So it was like that permission given thought. We also use thoughts like all or nothing thinking. When we're on that borderline and we're negotiating with ourselves if we should binge or not, we sometimes will come up with a thought like, oh, well, I already messed up. I might as well eat. That thought is the one that derives the feeling of giving into your desire, which gives you permission to eat. So it's always our thinking that's driving our behavior. And it's important to understand that once again, you have the awareness after, and then you find awareness maybe during the binge, and then after some practice, you get awareness before the binge. And it's that ability to get awareness of your thoughts before you binge, which is the control that you will have, the power that you have to choose a new thought that will stop you from binging. So I'm gonna go through, I like to call it unintentional and intentional models. So the example as I've been talking is you see a cookie. Now, by the way, if you're watching, cookies, I talk about cookies all the time because it's my favorite food. I'd love for you to write in the chat box below, you know, what are some of your what are some of your trigger foods? What are you what are you triggered by? Let me know. I'd love to use examples of your own foods. So you have a, you have the cookie and you have the thought, I have no control which makes you feel powerless, which then you eat the cookie and you stay the same. Now, the intentional model that's gonna help break this is you see the cookie and then you have the thought, 
I have a choice or I, I am in control. You're not buying into this because this is not true. You're believing to think that. And then when you feel like, when you say I have a choice, you feel empowered. And then you, that empowerment gives you the ability to be like, no, I don't need to eat the cookie. So you don't eat the cookie. And as a result, you're going to change. So it's just in our thinking that changes everything. And when you can get intentional and bring it to your prefrontal cortex, which is just awareness, you're aware that you have a thought. You can, you always have the power to choose a thought. It's not in your subconscious mind. So other things that you can, other thoughts that I like to give examples are, let's say you put a thought in here, I messed up. I might as well eat whatever. Once again, that feeling, you're giving yourself permission. You're giving into desire. You're going to eat some more, which is going to result in you staying the same. You can also easily choose to believe like, oh, the thought would be, you maybe you slip up. And then instead of going into that, I already messed up, you go, oh, that was a slip up, no big deal, I'm gonna learn and move on. It's kind of like the analogy of like, if you drop your phone on the floor and it cracks, like one little crack, and then you're like, oh, well it's already cracked, I might as well smash it up and like completely destroy it. It's, if we do that with food, it doesn't make sense. It's no big deal if you have a piece, an extra cookie or a piece of pizza. It's your thinking about it that's bringing you further into the binge or away from it. So it's really important to understand that. And once again, it's all of our thoughts, so we're, to, we're just working on the thought level. A bunch of thoughts put together create a belief system, and a bunch of belief system create an identity. And how we end up in this binging is because of the way that we, our beliefs about us, that we're powerless, that, oh, I'm just a binger, or I'm, this is the way I was born. Those are the thoughts that are fueling the story. What if you just decided to choose to learn, sorry, to choose to think that you just don't have the skill set yet? that you're just learning how to work with your brain. You're learning how to stop. And that's gonna be more empowering. So it's always your thoughts, it's always your stories, and it's going from your unconscious mind that's keeping you stuck in the cycle versus choosing to use your prefrontal cortex to be intentional and to have the power to choose. Now, this is what I teach my clients and I take them through these exercises where we just get aware on our thoughts and our thought downloads and it's really important to understand what thoughts and beliefs that are keeping you in this habit of binging or the habit of overcoming and it's so subconscious you don't even realize it so that's what I do that's one of my specialties is helping get is helping people be that mirror where you don't see it because you're so stuck in your story where I help pull out those limiting beliefs so that we can change it and rewire your brain to believe the new belief and then guess what it becomes automatic so oh hey Ann, i just saw you join happy birthday it's ann's birthday hi so great to see you so i hope that this all makes sense this is this is it this is how you get your power back is by being really intentional realizing that you have a choice when it comes to your thoughts it's just a you're a lack of belief systems and a lack of skill sets and what you need to do is just Small little tweaks over time is what will have it. So if you are interested in exploring your limiting beliefs and the thoughts that are keeping you stuck, and here's the crazy thing. Sometimes just realizing that you have a thought and that you're, you're stuck for because you, you think that it's always going to be like this or that you have no control, small little things will keep you stuck. So if you're interested in, in me helping you with your limiting beliefs, I'd love to love to help you. So feel free to re reach out to me on um, direct message. You can email me if you're on my email list. I'd love to get on a call with you and we can go through your limiting beliefs and I will help you start changing this. So Hope you have a great day, and I will be back for you tomorrow. And tomorrow, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about restrictions. So I will see you then. Have a great day.